Welcome to this tutorial video. In this video, we'll be looking at conical pendulums. Now, to get an idea of what a conical pendulum is, let's just have a quick look at the following video. Using the website GeoGebra from geogebra.org, we can see here a conical pendulum. You can make the object rotate around. It's called a conical because it makes effectively the outline with the string to the top a cone, if you like, an inverted ice cream. So we can see here an object running around in a conical shape. Okay, we rotate the angle, we can see that that is really the same as a, a circle when viewed from the top. And then we drop it back down, you can see the cone shape, the side profile of a cone as it rotates around. It's a nice little um, software package that allows you to change the animation speed, go faster, slower. You can effectively change the radius, changing the angle and allows us to alter our viewing angle. So hopefully, this GeoGebra simulation allows you to understand what we mean by a conical pendulum. Let's now consider the components of the forces that operate in a conical pendulum. From this diagram, you can see we have a gravitational force component operating downwards, and we also have a tension component, um, which is inclined at an angle to the vertical. Let's look at those. So we have a gravitational force component followed by a tension force component. So as always with the vector diagram, we start with the tail and we draw from the tail to the head of the first being the gravitational force. Then from the head of the first, we draw the tail of the second to the head of the second. These are the only two forces available. When we combine them together, we get a resultant or a net force. And of course the net force starts at the tail of the first and finishes at the head of the second. So this is the vector addition of Fg, gravitational force, Ft, the tension force, and the resultant produced vector force is the force of the net. So in terms of our diagram, that generates a centripetal force towards the center. That is our net force. If we look at that right angle triangle, we can see the combination of these three vectors of force generate a right angle triangle with the same angle theta as we have the incline from the vertical with the tension. So we can use this knowing this is a right angle triangle and use some basic trig laws to work out some uh, simple equations to use to solve unknowns. So if we look at the sign of this particular angle with a right angle triangle, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So that gives us sine of theta equals the F net over the tension force. And we can express that as F net equals Ft sine theta. And of course, circular motion, the net force is mv squared on r. So finally, from the sine of this right angle triangle of the sum of all the forces, we have mv squared on r equals Ft sine theta. So effectively, this is relating the mass, velocity, and the radius of our object, in this case a ball, against the tension force and the angle. So that's the sine function. Let's now consider the cosine function. Cosine function is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is the gravitational force against the hypotenuse, which is the force due to the tension. So cos theta equals Fg over Ft. And we can rewrite that to say Fg equals Ft cos theta. And of course, force due to gravity is a product of mass times gravity. So finally, we have from the cosine of this force diagram, right angle triangle, mg equals tension force cos theta. The third and final trig function is that of the tangent. Tangent, as we know, is opposite over adjacent. In this case, opposite is the net force over adjacent is the gravitational force. That can be written as F net equals Fg tan theta. And of course, we know that the centripetal force is the net force, mv squared on r. And we know that the gravitational force is the product of mg. So we end up with mv squared on r. The net force is equal to mg tan theta. Now clearly we can divide both sides by m, which gives us v squared on r equals g tan theta. And finally, v squared equals rg tan theta. That's the third and final of the trig relationships. There is one other right angle triangle relationship we can use, that being Pythagoras' theorem. So in this case, we remember the equation of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse and a and b are the two side lengths. So let's substitute that in. F net is a side length, F net squared, plus Fg 
another side length, Fg squared is equal to the hypotenuse, the tension force squared. So we can rewrite that and say that the tension force is equal to the square root of the force net squared plus the force of gravity squared. So we now have four equations that we can use to make calculations based upon an angle of a conical pendulum given its mass, radius, and velocity. Let's now apply this to an example. A steel ball of mass 2 kilograms is swinging in a circle of radius 0.5 of a meter at a constant speed of 1.7 meters per second at the end of a string of length 1 meter as shown in figure 1a below. On figure 1b above, draw all the forces on the ball, label all forces, and then finally draw the resultant force as a dotted line labeled FR. So we have, first of all, the tension force being drawn on the ball, FT, and we have the force due to gravity heading straight down, FG. They are the two forces. In addition, we now need to add the resultant force with a dotted line and label it FR. When we add those two as a vector, we know the resultant force is towards the center in such a direction. We're now asked to calculate the tension in the string as shown in figure 1a. Now there's more than one way of doing this. Option number one is to simply use the following data. So the force of the tension is question mark, the mass is two kilograms, the radius is 0.5 of a meter, the velocity or the speed is 1.7 meters per second, and the gravity is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So we know using the Pythagorean method that the force of tension is equal to the square root of F net squared plus FG squared. We can expand that where F net is MV squared on R and FG, gravitational force, is MG. Let's now sub in some values. So the mass was 2, the speed was 1.7 meters per second, and that's squared, divided by a radius of 0.5, and that's all squared, plus 2 times the gravitational field strength of 9.8 in brackets squared. Multiply those through, and we end up with a net force and the tension of 23 newtons. Good work. Let's now look at a second option we can use, second option to calculate exactly the same answer. Second option looks at the angle um, from the data we have with the lengths of the 1 meter and the 0.5 in the figure 1a. We can see the triangle here, the red triangle, where we have an angle and we have 1 meter on the hypotenuse and we have 0.5 on the opposite side length. So sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Therefore, the theta, the angle, is inverse sine in brackets opposite over hypotenuse. We can sub in our value of opposite is 0.5 of a meter and hypotenuse is 1, and the inverse of 0.5 is 30. So we now know that angle is 30 degrees. Now that we know the angle is 30 degrees, we can use a simple trig function. So let's find the tension force. So it is question mark. The angle is 30 degrees. We know the mass is 2 kilograms. We know the radius is 0.5. And we know the velocity is 1.7 meters per second. So mv squared on r, the net force, is equal to force of tension sine theta. Therefore, when we rearrange, to get force of tension by itself, we divide both sides by sine theta to end up with force of tension equals mv squared over r times sine theta. We can then sub in our values where mass was 2, speed was 1.7 meters per second, radius was 0.5, and angle was 30. When we do that, that also gives us an answer of 23 newtons, the same as our first technique using the Pythagoras technique. Look, I hope this video has certainly helped people understand the concept of conical pendulums. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please like, please share, please comment, and as always, subscribe. Thanks for watching.